Okay, I hope you can hear me now. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Applause. Okay, uh, so hi. Uh, first talk of two today. Uh, first one on uh, how uh, arcade cabinets work. So uh, quickly about me. Uh, I run that, which is Westermania. Uh, we, uh, I uh, buy and sell, uh, restore arcade machines, uh, parts, pinballs, and some other uh, things people want in their man cave. Uh, and well, that's what I do, and I uh, like to share knowledge and uh, do stuff. By the way, I did tell this, this is with English, right? So live with it. Um, also, a little disclaimer there are many ways to build arcade machines. This is my way. If you don't agree, please come and talk to me, and I will sell you parts to do it correctly. Uh, now, let's get started. So, how do we. Uh, how do we build an arcade machine? You do it like this. This is the end of the seminar. Do you have any questions? <laughs> so no. Uh, arcade machines, uh, let's make it really uh, easy. Um, you have your input, which are your buttons. I really can't see my screen over here, which is irritating. Hang on. Let's remodel this. Uh, mine. Keine Ahnung. So, hi. Welcome back. So you have um, the, uh, the input, which are your, your buttons. You have your, your game system in the middle, which is your, your game board or whatever. Uh, an output for uh, uh, video and audio in, in the top. And um, some blinking lights on top to make everything shiny and nice. And in between, you have uh, some some magic which is which is going on, um, which we will uh, come back to later on uh, in, in in different slides. So, um, and as we said, the input are uh, buttons and joystick with joysticks, which um, actually are not important because you can make it even smaller, and then you come to uh, the micro switch, which will connect everything together. Micro switch has uh, three connectors, uh, which is a ground connector, normal open, and a uh, normal closed. <coughs> and the normal closed you would normally in, in an arcade cabinet you would never use unless, like, for a security switch for a door or something else. But that's not really uh, how this house is done. The ground connections you can just uh, loop them, loop all of them together. They are they are shared, and then the. Uh, Normal open the NO connector. That's where your signal comes. So you, you will have one one cable for up, one cable for down, one for left, one for right. Uh, a number of buttons and this uh, for each player uh, with extra cables for uh, all your coins and audio and video. So to do this, you have something called a uh, JAMA cable, which will connect all these wires together, and you can. Um, in, in, in one big cable salad package have this fixed. Now, what's, what's JAMA? Uh, JAMA is a uh, uh, Japanese association. It's Japan a music machine and manufacturers association. And um, because in the uh, 1980s, every um, company had its, had its own uh, layout in, in cables, uh, it was very hard to uh, change a board in one cabinet. So say if, if you had uh, a Pac-Man and you wanted to put a dig duck in there, you have to take all the cables out and put them and uh, redo them completely. So they made a standard <coughs> uh, cable here. And the confusing part on the JAMA cable is it has input output together on, on different pins. So what you have is it will input uh, two joysticks with three buttons per player, a start button, coin button, test buttons, and some other smaller stuff. And it will output uh, your video and audio and your coin counters if you have them together. And then before uh, the, the JAMA, there was, these are some of the, the older um, uh, cable standards. So what you had, um, for instance, Sega had their own cable, Konami had their own cable, IBM had their own cable. For all the games like, say, say Pac-Man or, or Galaga, it was completely unique. Now, there are adapters, so if, if you have a JAMA cabinet, you can still connect those old PCBs with a default adapter, or you can make your own if you really want to. Are coming to the output. 
Uh, speakers I will not cover, just take any car speaker, uh, 8 ohms, and it, it should work. So you have three choices for the video, which is an original monitor, you have a computer, mon you have a computer uh, VGA, and you have uh, an old TV that you can use. Now the uh, original arcade monitor is of course preferred, uh, although they are getting pretty hard to find. There is currently no factory left in the world which still makes CRTs with exception of some Chinese companies, but because they use lead and other metals, they're not allowed to be imported into the EU. So uh, we, are, we are stuck with that. Um, they are repairable, although some parts like uh, flybacks and some other signal generator transistors are getting hard to find, and you would, be, we would have to um, have three um, monitor PCBs I put them together to make one working one. Also, the hours that the tube can work is limited, and once your tube is, say, uh, X100,000 hours, it will go dark and stop working. There are devices called a rejuvenator where you can bring them back to life, but you will actually bring them back to life by making a short circuit in them, and it's uh, a last effort, a last attempt to get everything uh, back to work. Uh, you can also use a TV, although it, it's a, well, okay, if you look the, if you look the same, it's, it's, a, it's a big glass tube for some electronics, it is not. Uh, you have uh, different voltages, you have plastic boxes, you have things which are there, there are things which are not there, um, although it is, it is um, not impossible. And then, of course, uh, the, the VGA monitor. Um, same problem here as with the TV, plus it works at different resolutions. <coughs> uh, as, as, as you have heard, uh, well, no, um, most arcade games run in what's called 15 kilohertz, which is a resolution, while VGA is 21 kilohertz, and they're not directly compatible. So we'll, we'll need to come back to that later. Uh, also, for um, say, if you want to go to 20, 21 inch, that's when the LCD screens came in. So you don't really have CRT uh, uh, VGA monitors in that size, unless they're really expensive professional um, screens. So, as I said, the, uh, the 15 and the 31 kilohertz, why is it, uh, is it important and where do we get those numbers? So if you look at a, a normal 50 kilohertz or an RGB arcade board, you have more or less 300 lines left and right at 50 half frames or 50 frames a second. This gives you 15,000 times a second that your electron beam goes left and right in your monitor. It will go up and down 50 times, but it will go left and right 15,000 times a second. That's your 15 kilohertz signal. If you have a higher resolution, so more lines in, on the VGA, you have uh, about 500 lines at 60 hertz because it's an uh, American system, you have more or less 31,000 times a second that your electron beam will go left and right. And that's, that's, that's actually the, the, the major difference here. Um, and if you have looked at the um, compatible method that, that um, say, uh, a JPEG has, which is which, which it's one of the adapters, it, it, it will show you the, the screen twice next to each other, which is like a, a kind of a, a loophole that uses this 15 to 31K. So, but, so as we know, we can have a game board at 15 kilohertz to a CRT, a TV, or arcade monitor. We can have a 31 kilohertz uh, PC to a, a PC screen, which will work, but to go from one to the other, this is where the first piece of uh, the magic comes in. So you have the, the video converter board which is a, a, a small board that you put in between and it will, it will take an arcade signal and from a board like that and convert it to a VGA, which is uh, easier to find. Or you can have, uh, if you want, want to put a PC in a, in a cabinet, you can make it into a signal which is compatible with your arcade monitor. Uh, they work in, uh, in both ways. This also allows you, if you, if you have a cabinet which is dead with, with, with a dead screen, that you can put a VGA screen in there, even a, or a TFT panel, and that you can at least, it, it will not look the same, of course not, but at least you can play the game again, or you can use a cabinet again. 
And for the uh, TV part, you have uh, most of, of the TVs in Europe have uh, a SCART connector, uh, where you have all the uh, RGB signals on it, which is good. Although uh, the problem is, your arcade board will output five volts. Your TV will expect three volts. If you have a really crappy Aldi PC, it will blow up because there is no security in there. So it's uh, better to uh, have some resistors in it. Uh, the values are known. And for the uh, auto select, which is if you, oh, uh, in the 90s when you switch on your DVD player, your TV would, would automatically go to the DVD uh, signal. For this, it was a special pin with a voltage, uh, which you also need to uh, fake a bit, and it depends on each TV model. But this is only when you're using an old TV to replace an, an, an arcade monitor. So when we look at uh, the, the summary in general on, on how this uh, connects up for now, so uh, if, you have, if you have a full JAMA cabinet, you start with your buttons, you go into your cable, to your board, out your cable, and to your screen. This is the basic setup which you will also, ha also have over here. If you want to use a VGA monitor, then you will need an adapter to put in between, otherwise it, uh, it, it doesn't really change. So this is a default arcade cabinet. Now, um, what we also do a lot is uh, uh, have existing cabinets and transform them into main because, well, people have room for one machine at home. So they, they would like uh, to, to put a PC in there. And that's um, about half, half of, the, of, the, of the games, the cabinets we sell are either with a multi-game or, uh, or ready for a, a main PC. So first of all, you need some extra hardware, where your JAMA cable will not talk to your PC with, with USB or keyboard. Uh, a device called the iPad will. Uh, they're, they're made by uh, a, a company in, uh, in uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Ultimark. And they, are, they, they work pretty good. They, they were expensive, although they now have a budget version that you cannot reprogram, but otherwise will, will still work. So also as, as you are a Java cable, uh, your iPad has support for two joysticks, more buttons, eight instead of three, uh, and you have some, some extra um, uh, connectors that you can, you can use and, uh, for whatever, they want, whatever you want. Um, this is for cabinets without a JAMA cable. If you have a JAMA cable and you, you don't, don't want to destroy everything, you can use a JPEG, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, the function is the same, but it will reuse your, your existing cabling in uh, the cabinet. Uh, what this does not do is convert your video from a 31 kilohertz PC to 15 kilohertz arcade monitor. You still need to, need to do this yourself. So uh, you can get a hard, a special video card, or you can do it in software, there are other tricks, but that, that's something that you will need to uh, look at, and it's uh, different for each uh, video card, so you have to do some investigation uh, on yourself. So, suggest that we have a PC in the cabinet now. You start again with your buttons and your joysticks, you go into the USB controller, into the iPad, which will, trans which will go into the PC. The PC will then output with uh, a, a video signal to your uh, arcade monitor or your TV. And if you have a, a VGA monitor, you have your buttons into your iPad, into the PC, and then straight to your uh, video. And finally, if you have a JAMA cabinet, which, which, which is what we started with originally, I want to put a PC in there. Again, you start with your buttons. You go into your JAMA cable. The JAMA cable will go onto the JPEG. The JPEG will transform everything to USB for your PC. Your PC will then have to output a compatible video signal, which will go into the JPEG, which will put it out onto the JAMA cable and out on your screen. This is the most complicated setup, but it's also the nicest one uh, for the uh, end result. And of course, we have now the hardware for, for MAME. There is also software, uh, wh what you need to uh, take into account. Um, the rumor is that MAME is hard to configure. Has anybody tried this already to, to configure MAME? Yes or no? How easy was it? 
say? Well, yeah, it is. It is easy, but there are some workarounds which once once you know them, and of course you have your cabinet, so it's it's too late. But so there are um, the the um, some important things about Mame is that. Um, there are many versions. You have you have a de default build. It's um, uh, it's not open source yet, but the source is available. It's a thing of politics and license. But anyway, um, everybody can make the, their own meme if they want to and change it and make extra tools, which is what is what what people do. Um, the good thing is that they all share the same configuration file. So um, you can use one version of MAME to actually play the game and one version of MAME to configure it, which is the trick that I, that I normally use. Well, first of all, when you start MAME, it does nothing. It needs a config file and you, you need to create it. If you don't create your config file, you are lost. MAME will say config file not found and please die. And you're stuck. So that, that this, this you need to configure it. And once we have a config file, um, I normally use a command line um, version of MAME to play, but to configure it, uh, I use the graphics version, the, which is uh, way easier to use. Um, it's not really fast, but you only need, need it for basic configuring. Afterwards, uh, you, you never need, need to use it. So, uh, well, load it up, go into the menu, uh, set all your buttons. Um, blah, blah, blah. And this is all crap I forgot to take out. So, um, so all the... Um, in your default name, you will use a lot of your control keys, alt keys, space keys to push your buttons, which is also a feature in Windows uh, called sticky keys for um, people with, uh, who, can, who cannot see very good. So you can have zoom functions, all your functions, which are called the sticky keys. And you need to switch, switch, these, switch these off in your control panel. Else, if you say have uh, in a fighter and you want a build up a power and you hold down your button one or your control key, Key on your keyboard, suddenly you will get a pop-up that uh, some feature in Windows became active. So you, you need to switch that off with, with the sticky keys. Oh, and you have um, sticky keys, filter keys, and toggle keys, and you have to open each setting and disable them, or it will uh, it, it will come up. If you want to save your high scores, by default, MAME does not save high scores. Um, this Because MAME wants to be as original as possible, and, and if the original board did not save the high score, MAME will not save the high score. There are special versions of MAME which will do this, and they are they need a file high score dot that, which uh, does not keep the high scores, but has a list of where the high scores are for the game, uh, etc. Same for cheats. By default, you cannot cheat with MAME. There are versions which allow it. And when you have everything done, you can uh, have a, a menu system to it. So um, I think today most people will use Hyperspin. Um, hyperspin is for me very complicated and um, just too much, but people like it. I don't. Uh, I, I used to use uh, Maximus Arcade, but it's, it's no longer developed and you cannot get license keys for, for, for it anymore. So, um, but well, the internet is your, is your friend on that one. Um, the best thing is that, yes, your menu system will need, need a lot of work once, uh, and that's a one-time operation which you, which you will spend many months on. Um, if, if people uh, come over to me to um, configure it, I made a default config two, three years ago, and I still just copy it over, and it, and it works. Um, so unless you really change everything in your main version with your home versions, you just leave it uh, how it is and, and never ever change it. Um, some other tricks, um, if uh, certainly 3D games, because MAME is by default not uh, 3D um, uh, hardware compatible, it's, it does everything in, in software. You can um, uh, enable automatic frame skipping. It's a it's a feature hidden somewhere in the config file, but luckily in the uh, graphics version of of Mame, you can you can just set it to automatic. And what will happen is every now and then it will skip a frame so that the audio can keep playing at a good level. If you're if in your game your audio audio level is really low, 
or it starts to have problems, that means your CPU is too slow for MAME. And if you want uh, some, some scan lines on your uh, VGA screen to make it look more retro, you can have uh, PNG filters, which are uh, small images that, that you um, overlay. And although MAME is not multi-threading, multi you can uh, have a second thread which will uh, offload some of um, the video subsystem, which is not part of the, uh, the game itself. So for, for MAME, it, 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 it's, um, your config will never be finished. You, you can always improve things, you can always change things. There, there will be new versions, there will be uh, new whatever, a new menu system. And the, the biggest challenge in, in, in the MAME setup is that you have to declare it finished. You have to be happy at one point in time with what you have. Uh, once you have that, well, just uh, enjoy your, your, your cabinet. Um, this was really short, I know, because it's a very complicated matter with lots of personalized options. So if you have questions on this, ask them now or come and say hi uh, in a minute. And otherwise, um, at 7, I will also explain you how not to suck at pinball, which is a little, a little bit more fun topic than this. I think myself. So, question? Yeah, what do you think about Raspberry Pi and Xbox-based systems? Um, okay, so um, for the uh, audio recording question is uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, Xbox-based systems. Um, the there is um, the RetroPie shield on Raspberry Pi is pretty good. Uh, it's um, it works with limited uh, USB support, but it works. Uh, although the uh, Raspberry Pi 1 is, is just a little bit too slow, Raspberry Pi 2 is okay. And the problem was the menu was working fine with the controller, but not the MAME itself. Yeah, yeah. so it, 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 it's, it's um, the, um, the, the Raspberry Pi is advertised as a, as a one-stop shop that just plug it in and it works, as long as you use the same hardware as the guy who developed it. If the results were on both Xbox models. Yeah. Um, you also have um, um, modified Xboxes, which also have a, a, MAME, a MAME system on them with, with a menu. Um, these also work, although um, first version Xboxes are becoming rare because they also start dying. Uh, four left. <laughs> oh yeah, four left, okay. Yeah. Keep, keep them. <laughs> I wonder why don't you just go to uh, work on the, the CRTs? I mean, when they when they get really old and have too many hours and completely burnt in and stuff, why don't you just and if the if the monitor, the electronics still work, why don't you just go to scrapyard, salvage a CRT from an old TV just has a perspective so it has no burn in it, just put it in there. Okay, so uh, question is um, why, um, if your if your tube is old, why don't uh, replace it with another tube? I have to do an important for a second. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, he needs to say something. Yeah, Julian, but the question was: I just got to hear that there is a silver in the passage that the train has stopped. And if that is not removed, then we have to go out. What is it? eBay? What? Steiger. Steiger. Yeah, exactly. And if white handles are found, it can be found at the gas station. Sorry about this, what's so important to cut a car? <laughs> so, for sale, Passat, 20 euros. <laughs> 20, 25. I give 30. <laughs> okay, so the um, so, so question is, um, if, the, if the tube is, is old and burned in, why not just get any random other one? Correct? Yeah. Uh, you, that, you have different kinds of tubes with uh, um, different... Um, ways they work. So um, at, the end of the, at the end of the tube you have a small PCB called the neck board um, and um, between um, TVs and arcade monitors they are not, not always the same. Also um, there is a copper wiring to make the magnets go up and down and left and right to, to focus. Yep, with the yoke. Um, each uh, 
monitor chassis, so the, 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 the hardware board, is matched to, uh, to, to the specific impedance or resistance of the yoke, which means it can work, it cannot work. Um, you have, for instance, m uh, many older, older TVs will have a high resistance, many uh, modern ones have a lower one. Unless it's a really big screen, then you have also again a higher one. Uh, so you would need to take measurements of your old tube of all the pins, see what's what, uh, which signal is your red, your green, your blue, what's your ground, which are your heaters, which is your high voltage. Um, and then look at the resistance of your of your yoke coil. And then maybe it can work. Some, some, guy, um, so, some guy at one point just pulled off the yoke of one uh, CRT and put it to another. But that's only good for black and white CRTs because you completely have to rework the, the entire color alignment. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so, 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 so he moved the entire yoke and he didn't break the vacuum. Okay, but yes, you. Um, there are. If you look at the back of the yoke, you have like these little plastic clips, and those regulate the actual focus of the colors. And that's and that's different for every tube because yeah. they are they are individually coming out of an oven, and they all have their own little imperfections. So. Um, the best thing for black and white tubes it's okay but for color tubes it's basically uh, yeah but if you got if you got too much time um, even even no even if if you have a black and white tube just uh, twist your RGB together and you have a per perfectly mo mono signal for your black and white screen Okay. So, but yeah. Um, so, so, in, um, so in short, yes, you can take random tubes and adapt them, but it's a lot of work. Other questions, remarks, stories, passats for sale. What would you recommend to avoid tearing in MAME? What? Tearing in MAME. Um, there is not that much you can do. <laughs> it depends on your MAME, your MAME version, um, um, also uh, what the refresh rate of your TFT screen is. You have many factors. So the, uh, the best result is always with a CRT, uh, which will limit it, but then, well, you're, you're still using software and you're dependent on how good the actual emulation is. So, um, MAME, as, as, as I said, MAME will never be perfect. Go in there and tell me which of these machines are running MAME. <laughs> I can just reboot them and see what happens. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> okay, next, that's it. Then I'll see you guys here at my desk or uh, at, at 7 for the pinball things. So uh, in the meantime, go practice. Thanks.